My name is William Trevor Griffiths and I am an ageing painter. I've been doing it for 50 years now and um, I'm seeking an exhibition. Um, I attended Salisbury and Camberwell Art Schools back in the 60s and um, I've shown in a variety of places including the National Theatre and also the Piccadilly Gallery which is about as near as I got to Cork Street or Bond Street. Um, I'm hoping to do a little better this time. Um, this is a series of paintings that more or less, you know, started themselves. You know, they, they sort of just took over and whether they have any real value or not is beyond me, but um, I'll explain why I did them. If you look at a piece of text in a language you do not understand, you can still appreciate the style and the layout for its own sake. Knowing as well that the text does convey information adds another dimension to one's attitude. A great deal of our visual communication is made by the use of marks, as is the case with all paintings. The paintings in this exhibition use simple marks, the line, spot, blob, arranged on a flat surface. They attempt to explore the random and organic basis of pattern making. The interesting thing is, with the human brain wired to seek patterns real or implied, we often forget that we are an integral part of a larger and more wonderful pattern. The pattern holds me, holds you. To make one's mark, man has always used marks to externalize his innermost thoughts and to provide information to others. Many marks have evolved and been categorized to form what we call lettering or numerals. There's a long winding link between all form of forms of man's mark making from cave painting cuneiform, the pictographs of the ancient Egyptians or the Mayans, Ogham, Chinese calligraphy, Renaissance and modern painting, and we might even think of barcodes and pixels. Some marks are so expressive that they carry hints of their meaning and their shape. Punctuation marks spring to mind. What better mark or symbol could there be for a question? Or for emphasis? The optimistic nature of a tick used when a child gives a correct answer, or when an item is checked on a list, explains itself. A cross used for a wrong answer is more complex with a plethora of meanings. It is the letter X and apart from religious symbolism, it's used whenever two paths intersect. It's also very useful on treasure maps. Mark making is one of mankind's seminal acts. The paintings of this exhibition are based on simple mark making, allied to another human tendency, pattern making. The human brain is wired to see similarities and where not to impose them. A few other ingredients are used such as balance, emphasis and repetition. Painting is an affirmative activity, an optimistic activity, and can on occasions approach an act of devotion itself. These paintings are made of marks, but for me they have other levels. I hope they will for you. The very first picture um, that started me off on this lot was um, an attempt to paint a piece of cloth, not in the normal way where you just go for the highlights and the, you know, the troughs, but um, stitch by stitch, which is rather ridiculous when you think about it. But then that got me thinking about the, the whole thing of links and nets and webs, and of course the symbolism of um, weaving is you know fairly well known you know the fates and our lives wrapped up with it and of course the way grids and meshes seem to govern our lives to a large extent in a funny sort of way it's almost like a primitive response to um, things like computers and what have you maybe <laughs>